not sure how many of you may have known Stephen Caffrey, uh, Caffrey, Caffrey Hero. Caffrey Hero. It's hard for a Kessler to say that, I guess. <laughs> One of the victims of 9-11. But I do know many of you in our audience today have gotten to know his father, Stephen. Over the past many years, if you've attended this event, and this memorial service, he has authored a beautiful and poignant poem that recounts the acts of that day. Each year, Stephen reads the poems. Thankfully, through Steve's poems, these thoughts, his thoughts and love for his son, he had not only gotten to know his son, but his poem has become such a special moment of this annual remembrance ceremony. And we have copies here today if anyone likes them. This year, we asked Stephen to be our featured speaker and to share some of his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen Caffiero. Thank you everyone, and thank you all for coming. Oh, it's been such, such an honor to come here every single year. You know, this was the first year since the Freedom Tower was built that I went down there the first time. Did you ever hear of a coincidence? To me, I don't think there is anything called the coincidence. I always think it's the divine hand. Father Carlino, I think you could agree with me on that. There's no such thing as a coincidence. When my son first got the job at the World Trade Center, he only worked there three weeks, so it was his 12th day. He came up to me on Labor Day, and he wasn't supposed to come up that weekend. He was supposed to come up on Friday, Tuesday was September 11th. That was God giving me my son for the last time. Coincidence? I don't think so. So this year when I had the honor of presenting the 9-11 Memorial and the museum with a poster of my poem, they accepted it gladly. And then I went over to Ladder 10, and I'm sure you firemen, police officers know about Ladder 10. Those fellas were glad to accept that poem and were truly honored. I had lunch with them, and we shared stories that day. And my poem now also hangs in Ladder 10, which you probably have right now. So. Was it a coincidence? I don't think so. And I've never been down to the bands where the South Tower once stood and the North Tower once stood. I asked a buddy of mine who's the fire commissioner, which you fellas know, Gary Boomhauer. I went down there on a tour bus. We both went over towards the baths. And I said, Gary, is that where my son Stephen's name is? He says, it's out there. And as I walked towards where the South Tower stood, I laid my hand down to rest. And I wanted to try and find my son's name. Guess where it was? Right down here, where my hand was. Coincidence? I don't think so. Then inside the museum, I've never been inside the museum before, on one of the walls was about 60 pictures of the faces of victims and it flashed and it faded. Flashed and 60 more. Flashed, faded, 60 more. As soon as I walked over to where the pictures were, I said, Gary, there's Stephen's picture. And it faded. And a group of 60 more appeared. Coincidence? I don't think so. My son is with me, 
and always will be. And I truly believe that. Don't you, Father Corleone? Amen. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, it had been suggested to me, rather than recite my epic 9-11 poem, which had been handed out among you here today, that I stand before you and share my thoughts of how 9-11 has changed and affected my life since then instead. To begin with, I have never witnessed such violence and tragedy of this magnitude, a day that weighs heavy on our hearts and minds. I read about Pearl Harbor, seen pictures and movies of that sneak attack in Hawaii of 1941. But this attack was here in our own backyard, the United States of America. The aftermath had certainly most definitely made me weary of my surroundings, especially when I board a plane or cruise ship and I encounter a Far Easterner wearing a turban. I can't help it. I fear. I'm sorry, but I fear. When I sit and relax in the privacy of my own home to watch a football game and see one of the star players refuse to stand during the playing of our country's Star Spangled Banner in a most disrespectful disregard of our country and what it stands for. The frequent occurrences of innocent police officers being shot and killed for no apparent reason. Soldiers at Fort Hood also killed in the name of Allah. Bombings here in Boston, Paris, Russia, England, around the world. I see political correctness getting out of hand, or so it seems. It's gotten to a point I feel as though I'm walking on thin ice in fear of a simple compliment or a joke might offend someone or a few, not majority, and therefore the majority has paid the price. But wait, wasn't there a time majority grew? Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Many are offended by those kind greeting words. Offended? Shouldn't we be offended in defense by offering a warm and happy holiday greeting? And yet the few who complain overrides the many. Take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. In God we trust their complaining. Hmm. Our department stores and schools no longer greet you with Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, or Happy Kwanzaa. Christmas trees are holiday trees. Will it get to the point of changing books and movie titles, such as A Christmas Carol, A Christmas Story, Christmas in Connecticut? Will they target the music industry? White Christmas, the Christmas song, and I'll be home for Christmas, etc. Our own little children can no longer sing carols in most of our schools. Aren't we, the people, the majority, offended by all this? Don't we have a voice? If we're afraid to convey warmest wishes or compliment someone, we're heading for a communication breakdown. Walking about like zombies, like you see on The Walking Dead. Maybe that's why it's so popular. People are starting to relate. <coughs> that scares me. Has 9-11 changed me? Yes. I'm afraid it has. I no longer look at the sky and see a plane in flight without recalling that day when 3,000 innocent people, including my son, were taken out for doing nothing more than their jobs. Passengers traveling about on planes in the good old USA. The effects are still being felt by the aftermath of 9-11 with firemen, 
police officers, EMS crews, and rescuers with lung disease and cancer caused by breathing in the dust and hazardous particles flowing in the air down at ground zero. My son Stephen was on the phone that day reassuring his mother that he's okay. Ma, I'm okay, but I gotta get out of here, he said. I feel the heat next door. Look, oh my God, people are jumping out of the buildings. They're, they're running for their lives. Oh, Ma, oh my God! Cut off. Nothing. Nothing ever since. Those were the last words my, my son had spoken. Oh my God. I'll always remember that. I find myself in tears as I do so many times and say, I no longer have a son. His hopes and dreams literally gone up in smoke, erased forever. But let us not erase what's etched in our memory of the most tragic day in America. Let us never forget. Let us strive to prevent the few who try to prevent us from enjoying our God-given rights, freedoms, and values as a majority, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, America's all. When we call and stand together without offending anyone and say, God bless America. Please stand if you agree. Thank you, and God bless you all.